Hello guys, today I want to talk a little bit philosophically. For a long time I've been advocating with one message to make your controllers shorter. I have a few videos and one of them is very popular about refactoring controller like this. A longer method into various patterns, how to put extra stuff in various Laravel classes with various patterns to make the controller shorter. And the final result is this, just two lines of controller. Emma thought it was cool and you thought it was cool, but I want to challenge this thought. Does it always mean that we need to always make controllers shorter? And I have two examples for you. I want to point out some risks when using some design patterns in Laravel. Pretty popular things are model observers in Eloquent and also events and listeners in Laravel. So for example, in your controller you do some action like register in store controller, but then your observer watches for the changes on the model, like created or updated, and then does some action. And similar with events and listeners, after doing some stuff in the controller, you launch the event and then some listener is listening for it and doing some action. Why both of those tactics are risky, I will tell in this video with examples. And also I will quote official Laravel employee Mohamed Saeed on his opinion on listeners from Laravel podcast a bit later. But let's start with observers. For those of you who maybe don't know what observer is, from the official Laravel documentation, you can create a class that will monitor any event on the eloquent model. So when user is created, you have a method to process that user data. For example, log something or send an email or something like that. And there are events like created, updated, deleted, and force deleted. The problem here, however, is that official Laravel documentation doesn't point to any example of when, in what case it should be used. So it's all about syntax, and nothing really more. And also, official Laravel documentation doesn't say that there are events not only created, but creating, so before saving of the data. And I've googled Laravel observer example, and a few typical examples are like this. Let's open up one example. Observer, when creating the product, calculate the price. I will zoom it in a little. So calculating the price before saving the product. So that's one example. Perfectly valid in terms of syntax. So you're manipulating some data to calculate something before saving the data. Okay. Another example, some item in the database and then creating of that item, doing name, uppercase. Also performing some operation before saving the data. And third example, how to use observers, zoom it in a bit, saving the post, making the slug. And all of those three examples are valid. The problem here is that this logic is hidden from developer. And that problem arises when a new developer comes to the team or even yourself after a year or so, you're looking at the controller. So in this case, for example, store controller creating a new item and you don't see that hidden logic that name is somehow manipulated, transformed into uppercase or whatever. Similar here, product controller, the price is coming from the request and developer doesn't really see that this price is actually calculated with taxes under the hood. And that is especially true if a developer doesn't come from Laravel background, for example, from Symfony or from plain PHP, and they don't even know about model observer pattern existing. Ironically, I was advising the same thing as a cool thing on my repository of Laravel tips, and I've advised to set user ID in the observer, which is cool, but again, hidden from the developer. So after shooting this video, I will remove that tip from the repository. I just don't recommend that anymore. A good way, however, to use the observers is use exactly as it is said in the documentation. So created, updated, and events after the record is saved. So for example, user created, log something, log that new user is saved into the database or something, possibly send an email to that user. But even then, everything that happens in the observer is hidden from the developer. So instead of that, it is a better way probably, again, it's a personal preference, but I'm just thinking aloud here. A better way is to fire the event. In the controller, you would fire an event and then that event would be listened by some listener class. So any new developer would actually see that the event is fired and then would potentially look for what is listening to that. And let's talk about events and listeners now. A good example of events and listeners comes from Laravel Breeze, Laravel official starter kit. At the end of the store of register user, there is an event called registered. And again, the scenario of new developer comes to the team, looks at that and sees, okay, registered is fired and somewhere it should be processed somewhere. 
Then they dig deeper how events and listeners work in Laravel, and probably they land on Laravel official framework, event service provider class. And then they see that registered class of event is processed by this listener, sent email verification notification. And for this example, it doesn't really matter what is inside of that listener class, it sends the verification email, all cool. What matters is the pattern that events and listeners are usually used when the event may be listened by more than one class. So for example, on registered, you may send verification email, you may create another listener to log something, to create some more data for that user, to create a subdomain for them, for example, if you have subdomains, whatever is the logic, it would be inside of the listener. And in here, we follow the same pattern that I mentioned in the very beginning, which is make the controller shorter. So if you have a lot of logic, you put that somewhere, and that somewhere in this case is a listener, and then just fire an event. But let's challenge even that thought. From the controller, it's not clear what would happen after the user is registered. And here, I would like to quote Mohamed Saeed from Laravel, official Laravel employee, when he was talking with Matt Stauffer on Laravel podcast. I agree with you that events are not are not like part of my favorite or or it's not the favorite thing that I I use when I'm, when building applications. The problem with events is that you don't see what happens after you send the event. It's hard to figure out what happens. You have to check all the listeners that this uh, that listen to this event and check their code one by one until you figure out what happens when this event occurs. To me, I'd like to see, or it's better for me to see uh, the complete execution plan of the code that runs synchronously, at least. And mm -hmm. the parts that are going to be run in the background or via queue worker, I have them, like I have a job, I dispatch a job from, from the synchronous part, and I know that if I want to see what happens after dispatching this job or what happened inside the job, I'll go to the job class and check it out to find what's going on. But with using events, you have to like see all the listeners and check all the listeners. And I don't, I don't enjoy this way of building applications. I love to see everything in front of my eyes to see what happens when this piece of code is executed. And what Mohammed is saying, basically, it's better to fire a job from controller or some kind of action class or service class, whatever, which could be put in a queue. And that's actually the topic of that podcast episode. It was about queues, not about events and listeners. By the way, listeners can be queued as well. But again, it's hidden logic, hidden from the developer. So that is my overall point in this video, that controller doesn't necessarily need to be shorter. And in case of Laravel Breeze, for example, even here, Taylor could hide that validation into form request class, shorten this to have request validated, but he didn't do that. So if your controller is like 10 or 15 lines of length, it's okay. And you don't need to use design patterns to offload everything. And if you do offload stuff to some class, then at least make sure that controller points directly and clearly to what is happening under the hood. What do you think? Do you agree with my opinion? And have you had any cases where controller didn't show exactly what the code does and you would have to spend time digging deeper into various files and finding the exact logic? So is it really a problem? Share your experience. And if you want more videos, also philosophical like this one, subscribe to the channel and finance the channel. So the more support financially I get from you. So whenever you purchase one of the products that you can see on the screen here now, I have more time to shoot free daily videos like this one. See you guys in other videos.